Riders ready, watch the gate. Hey, welcome back to the Dirty Knobs Podcast. I'm your host, Hollywood Mike Miranda, and my co-hosts are, as always, JV James Vicente and EC Eric Carter. This episode has the Crockett and Tubbs of BMX. That's uh, Toby Henderson and Jeff Botima. Man, there are some great stories and some fantastic outtakes. So you want to make sure you stick on to the back and watch uh, watch those things. They're hilarious. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, Please hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And if you are listening to us on Spotify and or Apple, subscribe, like. If you uh, if you do like what you're hearing and like what you're seeing, then hey, follow us on, on, uh, on Facebook and on Instagram. And check out DirtyKnobs.com for merchandise. That's how you can support us the best. Buy some t-shirts, buy some hats. Uh, lastly, I want to tell you one more thing. That is... Make sure you mark your calendar for April 28th through the 30th. That's Dirty Fest, Southern California's Vintage BMX Extravaganza. <laughs> More details to come. Anyway, enjoy the show. Start that shit right. Yeah, buddy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy seat. Uh, our friends over at All Things BMX sent, uh, said, congratulations on season two. I. I I saw some of it. Oh yeah, good. Actually, actually thought the video was um uh the show was act was really good on Wednesday. Yeah, Matt Polkamp. Yeah, yeah, same here. I he thought was it was really, really good. Show. Yeah, me too. That was, that was pretty cool, and he was kind of like on the tail end of when I was kind of getting out of it. He was. He was doing well. Sure seems like a nice guy. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before EC gets on here. Mm. I got a note from uh from our friend Bob Horn. Yeah. He said, Hey, if you guys want to, you know, just a little tit, you know, a little tip for you. If you want to class it up a little bit, if you want to like raise it up a notch, yeah. Tell EC not to do the podcast with food in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see. Yo. Woo. Hey, woo. Woo. Hey. Hey. Happy New Year, you old dirty hey. dogs. Hey. Yeah. Happy New Year. Huh? Uh season dos. <laughs> yes. Man. How about that? Hey, uh, a quick shout out. Our friends over at All Things BMX actually congratulated us on uh on a second season nice hey yeah speaking they... of which oh yeah. cheers yeah. ec what do you got there i'm uh to topo chico twist of lime i don't know some carbonated fufu water dry january yeah <laughs> i'm not even i'm not even trying to dry january it's just nothing in my house right now oh dang <laughs> all right we heard i heard from my friend hans Jobe. Oh. Hmm. I guess dry January is a new thing. Four days. Four days. <laughs> you, made four, you made four days. They do, apparently, it's not in, in Prescott. It isn't dry January. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> if I go three days, the liquor store car starts calling, calling my house. Hey, you all right? Everything okay? <laughs> oh, I gotta run. I'm surprised that the stock at Modelo hadn't dropped. I'm I I think the guys at All Things BMX called to congratulate us on being well past halfway JV getting a tattoo. That's right. <laughs> JV, no, he doesn't no. have his earphones in. What was that? <laughs> I uh, nothing, I nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, the, the whole thing about JV committing to getting a tattoo of our logo I Once never we committed hit a, to that, by the way. You I mean, did. I remember. Um, ask EC. No. Yeah. Hey, okay. I'll hey, ask man. EC. <laughs> that's right. That's what we yeah. do. No matter how embarrassing it is, we honor our bets on this. Well, I didn't that's say right. I was getting a tattoo. <laughs> I remember distinctly, like it was oh, yesterday. 
All right, Maybe. well, find a tape. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go to the tape. Let's find go to the tape. instant replay. Find a tape. Uh, what do we get? Yeah. He's coming. It sounded like he just uh Yeah. He just got off the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> What about Toby? He's been on for 45 minutes. He's an overachiever. I'm going to whiz. All right. Well, they're both on. So go whiz. Hurry up. Go, go. Take your surfboard. <laughs> for God's sake, though, shut the door behind you when you go in there, man. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> you can't hide class, JB. <laughs> you can't hide class. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Season two yeah. started off with a banger. Started off with a banger. Follow it up yeah, with the dynamic duo. We got a dynamic duo coming on, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. The These peaches. Guys- I, I said. I said to see her last night. I go. They're like peaches and herb. And she goes, I don't know who that is. I said, you know, <laughs> Captain and Tennille. She goes, no, no. Still no. no. Too far. No. Too far. Yeah. You got to go. <laughs> bring it closer. Bring it- yeah, I don't know the name, the, uh, the name of the Teletubbies or something. I don't know what to use. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kinky Winky and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's bring in these two, two, two guys. Mm. All right. One and yes. two. Wait for it. Wait yes. for it. What? Oh. Hey, oh, there you go. We got the professor on. That's right. <laughs> the professor of BMX. Look at him. I know. All right. Say something so we can hear so we can hear your voice and see how. Okay, you can't hear me. All right. Feel better? That's perfect. Okay, all right. So can, I, can I have a beer now? I've been there waiting. you go. So, so you know what I was funny was because the one the ones I watched I don't know if you saw this racing beer we got right see this oh man what I have not that's sick yeah so uh, yeah a lots of brew company made it for us I only had it once but the very one of the videos I watched the podcast I watched Eric was walking around the kitchen having beers wife's in the background I go man it's the life I want so anyway <laughs> I got perfect. beer ready to in, in Eric's honor anyway that's how you do it. How you do it? Yeah, so that's that's how you do it. Back. So, Dude, I, I like the background right there, man. Background of what here? Yeah, I see the yeah. jersey back there, dude. A DG jersey from some show, bike, uh, umbrella, all our trademarks. I like it. I like the jersey there. A Hall of Fame stuff. Yeah, yeah. man. The Very jersey good. and the uh, the jersey and the BMX action stuff caught my eye for sure. Well, it's funny. I saw something that Mike sent me today with his background, with Tima's background. And it's like, I don't know if I'm jealous or, you know, or, or feel bad for you guys, but all this old stuff in the background, I look at all my stuff's kind of new stuff. I know. Uh, it's like different. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just means ours is worth more on eBay. That means damn right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that. Stuff. <laughs> I'm going to have a beer. All right. Is Botima, I see iPhone. Is that Botima? Is that iPhone? Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, right. he's uh, getting it sorted out. Okay. But I got a question for you. I don't want to forget. So Before saw, we start, that, dirty knobs, the word dirty goes both ways. I'm just wondering how you guys use the word <laughs> dirty. Is it about dirt or is it about dirt? It, it's it's how you want to interpret it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all things. That's what I'm worried about. It's all things. Oh, it's it's dirty. <laughs> it's dirty. We don't know which way yet. Uh, <laughs> later on, later on when these clothes come off. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna wish you didn't say yes oh my gosh <laughs> so good oh my right, hold on a second so are you guys gonna drink too is that what part of the deal or not oh dude they're drinking okay. we're, we're on our second moto <laughs> all, right. all right hey listen i'm gonna call him oh he's he's gone yeah, yeah, it dropped off. It took me a while to figure it out. I had to drive home and realize practice lap. What's he mean? Ah, it, once I got it, I had to pull the car over. You know, so, so <laughs> yeah, I sent him up in practice and called him today and walked him through the whole thing. And he's right. calling me now. Where's iPhone? <laughs> he's calling <Yeah>. him. <laughs> 
Are we going to edit this out? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> you record everything, bro. It all goes. Uh, hey, the good thing about this is now I'm not the worst technology guy yeah, yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> what do they say? All right, hold on a second. That's pretty hold, funny. On, hold on a second. Hold on a second. They say you don't have to be the fastest deer, just not the slowest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, hey, welcome to the Dirty Knobs podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know, uh, our guests tonight are the one and only Toby Henderson and Jeff Botima. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolute legends of the sport, icons, and uh, and our stat man on the hand, uh, JV will give us some uh, the oh, rundown. Okay. Tell him where he's wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Here, here's what I'm, uh, our buddies at Wikipedia gave us today. Our buddies. Yeah, our <laughs> our friends. All right, Toby. Nicknames: Coca Cola Cowboy, Captain Elbows, and Hollywood Henderson. Mike's Mike's. So I, I figured, so we got two Cowboys, two Hollywoods, and almost a full house. Yeah. We got Slavic. We got Slavic. We got two Hollywoods. Yeah. yeah. Uh, NBL 1980 number three pro, 82 uh, number two pro cruiser, in 1984 number one pro cruiser. Uh, USBA 85 number two pro and pro cruiser, 86 number three uh, pro. If you are Eddie, if you're Eddie King, you're going to have to eliminate some of these titles here because he doesn't believe in pro cruiser or cruiser at all. So <laughs> no, cruisers no, don't count according to Eddie count King. According to him. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Raced for every major company. Really, it was almost every major company except for CW and Schwinn, I think. I did write for Schwinn, actually. When did I was you? 13. <laughs> yes. Holy shit. All right. <laughs> so it's just CW. JB. <laughs> Our, Yo. old, our friends at Wikipedia got it wrong again, bro. Yeah. They got it wrong. They get they got it wrong. Uh, early sponsors as an amateur, uh, Jeff Otima's uncle. I didn't know that. Yes, that interesting. Before I actually knew Jeff, the crazy. Yeah, wow. that's crazy. Yeah, really? he was a high school. He was high school students. Him and his buddy. And they saw me at Orange Y track at twelve years old, and they go, if "This kid had a good bike. He might be okay." And they bought me a bike and gave it to me. Wow, that Isn't that is crazy. Cool. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Yeah. Before bike. you even before you even knew Jeff. Before I even knew Jeff. Right. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> hey, First bike. Story, huh? Yeah. Go ahead. Is, is that how you got to know? Oh no! Hey, wait, wait, hold! Don't, don't jump ahead. Let JV do his stats. Um, Come on now. All, all right. right. Okay. Uh, first bike, a Schwinn Stingray. See. First bike, Hall of Fame in nineteen ninety four, and retired in eighty seven. Jeff, yes. Nickname battling. <laughs> and we were. <laughs> it was so. Was it battling Botima? Is that how That's they? It. Is that how you That's say it? it? All right. That's it. Yeah. All right. First racing bike, a monoshock. A girl's Schwinn monoshock. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Eddie King says girls don't count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. NBA 1975, 14 over Grants champion. 1977 16x mongoose exhibition winner in 1976 nbl 15x gold cup winner raced in the la coliseum and the orange bowl in miami so that was pretty cool yeah 19 won both of them won both of them wow 19 1980 with toby were the first americans to be invited to europe to promote the sport of bmx Creator, and this is the one creator of one of the of BMX's most popular and famous bicycle components, the Botima Bullet Fork. Uh, purchase, I didn't know this. Uh, purchased Pedal Power Bike Shop in '82. Uh, yeah. In 1990 Hall of Famer. Yep. Kind of a long story with the Pedal Power purchase, but uh, I don't know if I should go into that, divulge it, but uh, oh, be careful. Yeah, I'll just leave it there. I'll do it. Yeah. It was <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, hey, have we mentioned it's dirty knobs? So <laughs> sling the dirt, baby. Sling the dirt. We'll start from the get go. Toby used to make Toby used to make fenders. Sling the dirt, man. Sling yeah, the dirt. Exactly. <laughs> well, Half a million of them, though. So there you there's, go. <laughs> there's a story behind the story, but uh, it's a re really, really good friend of ours. Um, I'm, I won't mention his name. Really funded it. 
funded it, bought it, and, and uh, but and wanted but put me as the owner. Now we used to go there and get our wheels built for free and leave. So the bike shop didn't last long. <laughs> uh, I used to go to the same guy and get wheels for free too. Okay. And, and he said, if I ran the sticker on, on my plate, he would get And I got my picture in the magazine. He would give me some money. Did I mention I got free wheels? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wheels were expensive. Yeah. Hey man, not, not, uh, not complaining at all. Not, not complaining at all. Not when they're free, they're not. No. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. When they're free, they're cool. That's right. <laughs> All right, EC, let, let her rip. What was your question? Well, I mean, obviously, straight to the point that, you know, with Toby talking about his first sponsor, I mean, is, is that how you guys met? Like, that's how you guys, you got to know each other? No, um, uh, not, no. Uh, in high school, I had a picture of Jeff laminated on my peachy. I think it was in California, you know what peachies are. But the iconic picture, Jeff doing a berm shot, number 25, laminated on my peachy. I, my peachy was Botima, right? And uh, anyways, I was in high school with this. Oh, I know that guy. We didn't know him. We didn't live that far apart at all, like four miles. I just didn't know him. Right. And, uh, anyway, my friend, a friend in high school introduced us, and that was that. We started riding together, and that was that. Wow. That picture. Man, was introduced you where? Um, uh, probably a ride or smoke a weed or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember Toby. I remember Toby at Hollyfield. Um, just when my uncle gave him that bike, you know, and uh, that was just right before like my 16th birthday. And uh, prior, like you know, up until 16, I didn't have a license, and I used to uh, I pretty much ride to Hollyfield and hang out with Tinker. When I when I turned 16, I got a car and I started hanging out with Toby. Yeah. So some so, high school. Yeah. Jeff's a couple years older than me. Wow. Yeah, so uh so from that up from the time I got my license, pretty much uh I would go drive to Toby's house and we ride like every day, you know. That that uh that picture you talk about, Toby, I'm sure Hollywood you'll be able to um drop this in because man, that that is a very iconic picture. It's iconic, One of yeah, the most yeah. iconic pictures. I know when, as soon as you described it, Toby, I knew exactly what you were talking about. You know, and honestly, Eric, I think it made me want to stay in the sport because at 12 and when, when, when I got into high school, we had a high school motocross. We got Letterman's jacket. Jeff was on a, on a high school motocross team too. But we got Letterman's jacket sport back in the day. Saddleback, I don't know the other tracks or what they were calling for getting down days. Um, anyway, um, but I started racing motorcycles, but I always had that picture of Jeff on my, so I think it kept me wanting to be in the sport. Yeah. And even the best story about it all is, is that we started hanging out. I was racing motorcycles, digging ditches all week. And I'd spend all that money on a new back tire and go race at Saddleback, right? I mean, all the money I made during the week digging ditches, I would spend on a motorcycle. Right. So Jeff invites me to go to a race in Downey one Sunday afternoon. So I go to Downey in some park in the grass somewhere, some stupid track. Jeff wins 300 bucks. <gasps> Monday morning, that motorcycle was sold. I went straight to Ralph's Bicycles and bought the best BMX bike I could get, Redline, right? White with white spoke. I spent all my motorcycle money on the best BMX bike I could get. And back then, I think I was 16, 17, what, 16. And I went straight to the forum. And you, to win, if you won at the forum, you were allowed to go pro, 16 novice or whatever it was, six, I don't know, 16 year old. So I went to, to, to the forum solely to win and become a pro because I wanted what Jeff had. <laughs> I wanted that so bad. And I went there and I won it and I became a pro. Yeah. No way. That is amazing. Yeah, amazing. That's awesome. Jeff, you were probably one of the first people in the sport to make money, weren't you? Well, I don't know about the first. I know, um, you know, um, well, put it this way. Um, I got a free van. I got my I did DG van, you know, uh, it was like when I was 16, I, it was the summer of, of uh, 76. And like I, I won that Orange Bowl in Florida, won the California Cup, won, uh, there was two exhibition races at the Coliseum. I won both of those. So I went three for three in the, in the stadiums. Dude. But then when I got back, DG, they, I, they gave me a van. They gave me the van, you know. So I was driving to school, you know, 16 years old in a DG van. It was cool. That is that, he told the so story I mean, about driving around and going riding in the van, in the DG van. Everywhere we went in the DG van, we were the coolest students there were. Oh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I I'm pretty sure there were some scared parents, though, when you <laughs> taking their friends in their van. Hey, man, you want to come in our van? 
Exactly. <laughs> Nothing with a chick <laughs> magnet, dude. That was, yeah. That was well, the goalie van, wasn't it? Yep. I was the picture of you two, the you two guys outside standing there with no shirts on and your long hair and the whole California look. I'm sure that chick magnet doesn't even uh doesn't even come close. Oh my it was God. cool, man. It was totally cool. Hey, how how did you guys how did the I remember seeing a picture of both of you in DG gear? How did that come about that you were both DG riders? I think Jim well, got me a favor. <laughs> Kind of well, me a deal that I didn't deserve, probably. <laughs> you, know, you know, we were right. We were like, you know, we were riding together almost every day. And then, uh, and then, like what Toby said, uh, we went to. I went. I remember right in the, in the beginning. You know, uh, we, you know, Toby came. We started racing. You know, he started racing again. And then, um, heck, it, it was just, everything just fell into place. You know. Yeah. And so, so then, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so Jeff got me a friend. He got me a bike. Got me a uniform. And then right after that, DG was sold. And Jeff and I, I'll never forget, it's you probably, a lot of people don't know that, but in the 70s, we had a big gas crunch. I had a brand new Toyota four-wheel drive pickup, and I think I'm 17 by the point, 16 maybe still. And uh, there's a race in San Diego, and there's a new owner of DG, right? And Jeff and I are going down to DG. How are we going to get to the races? How are we going to get money to go racing? And my dad had to drive over to the gas station that his buddy owned to get gas in my truck. I don't, I don't, not tough us to get it. And we got gas in my truck. We went down to San Diego to meet the new owner. And we asked him, are you going to fund us to go racing? Just crickets, man. Oh, he had a spread, sandwiches, and people were coming around, the new owner of DG. But nothing for Jeff and I. We had relatively good brand new bikes and uniforms from the old owner. But yeah. this new guy had nothing for us. So we went to the race. We did whatever. But on, uh, two, three weeks later, we get this call from Raleigh and they said, do you want to come ride for us? The two of you, me and Jeff. So our families kind of got together, right? My mom and dad, not so much into it, but Jeff's mom and dad were all into this thing, right? And they're like, so we got together. We should we do this? And Jeff and I are like, we ride for DG. How are we going to go ride for this Raleigh company? It makes absolutely no sense. This dumb road company, right? Anyway, we took the deal, obviously. It was yeah. the best decision I think we both made, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they just they skyrocketed our careers, right? With the covers of the magazine. And a lot of that's how I learned what I do today is the funding of the, the, the advertising dollars that went to the magazine put us on the cover. Right. right. And then we had to back it up with writing, and we did. But yeah. it wasn't, it was the sponsors. Eric probably knows this really well because he's in the mountain bike days, but this is really important with those bigger companies behind you and the advertising dollars and all that stuff. You have to be a good rider, but you also need that other that other part. And Jeff and I were lucky. But what was cool about it was that, that Chuck Robinson was the one who told Raleigh called him up. Chuck Robinson at the time was like the guy, right? And they said, We're looking for two buddies that can travel together. Wow. They're, like, they're okay on their bikes, right? So and Chuck Robinson, well, you gotta get you know Jeff and Tony. It's like perfect. And we got that call and, and we, you know, and then we got our first check from them and it was six, six, six hundred $666 each. We're like, oh <laughs> shit, maybe this isn't the right thing to do. Anyway. Yeah, that was kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there, really, man, it was nothing. That was, that was like such the coolest sponsor. We were never home. We, yeah. we went to Australia for a month. We came home. We came home. We flew back into, I think, um, what was that? North, Northwest uh, National uh, where it rained the whole day. Yeah, we we literally went flew in for that race, and the next day we had to pack our bikes to go to England. You know, oh, yeah, wow. Jeff and I were on the road all the time. Raleigh was sending us everywhere, right? So we went to Australia, like he said. We get to Australia, we're going basically grocery store to mall, to grocery store, doing little tricks. By day three, we're like twelve a day. We're like, what the hell is this? And Jeff and I are packing our bags midnight and we're walking down the hallway, right? We're out of there. This is ridiculous. And our team manager, we wake him up. Remember that, Jeff? We wake up yeah. and he yeah. comes running out of his room, his underwear. What are you guys going to do? We're out of here. We're not going to work 12 hours a day, you know, for nothing. Bunny hopping over kids at the end of grocery store line. <laughs> we're not going to do that. And it's what we were doing. Next day, we're on a boat, cruising the harbor. They gave us each a thousand bucks. Said, would you please stay? All right, we'll stay. Well, Jeff, three days later, gets laryngitis, 
It says, if you don't go home, you're going to get your tonsils out here. Jeff goes, see ya. Don't you remember that, Jeff? And he left. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we, so we, now we, I'm just in there. I was there a few weeks, weeks to go. And I got to finish up the whole thing myself. Anyway. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool, though. On the cover on this wagon wheel thing, and someone showed us this wagon wheel, which is a scooter pie in Australia. It's a scooter pie. You know what a scooter pie is? Yeah. Yeah. And on the scooter pie, the picture of Jeff and I, the iconic picture that you show, it was that picture on the front of the scooter pie with our schedule on the back. Wow. Oh. You could, it's just the whole back's the schedule. We're going to be these places, right? So and there's Jeff no way you could get, pie. no way you could get out of that. Well, we saw the scooter pond. We ain't doing that. No way. <laughs> that's a, well, that's why we went to all those stores. It was scooter buys promotion you now. So yeah, it was, exactly, exactly. You know, so well, they got their money. Out, but, whoever put that tour together, they got their money's worth, man. But yeah, oh, and man. Raleigh. I mean, Jump you guys in. truly were international stars, yeah. Yeah. and That's you good. put that brand. As far as the United States, you put the brand on the, on on the page. Yeah, Nobody no, knew no. that even Raleigh made BMX bikes until you guys showed up. I don't think I they ever did make a BMX bike. Did they? Yeah, well, well I, I, I I didn't know what a Raleigh was. I knew. Well, you know what? Funny, the funny the funny story is, you know, okay, so we're, we we're racing for Raleigh of England. You know, there's Raleigh of America, but then we're racing for Raleigh of England, main the main the headquarters. Main, yeah. so, so we're going there like once a month, you know, going there, you know, talking to the people. And we were, we went down to Piccadilly Circus. It's like, a, uh, it's like, a, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, like a Times Hollywood Square, Walmart, you right? Know? Yeah. And, and, and we were on riding our bike. We had like yellow tough wheels and they did, it, BMX did not exist yet. There were no BMX bikes. There were no people. We were bunny hopping and, and people were freaking out. They were like stopping their cars and like getting out and looking at us like we were like, from Mars, you know, they go, what is, what is this? You know, what are you, what are you guys doing? Where are you from? You know? And, uh, I mean, we, you know, we're rider bikes. It's like, you know, what, what are those wheels? They were just like completely blown away, you know? I so we're, it. it was really a trip, to, uh, just, you know, to get that type of reaction, you know, I mean, they're, we're just riding our bikes, you know, hitting jumps and stuff. And people were like skidding, stopping in their cars. Whoa, whoa, stop, stop. Let me see that. What is that? You know, can I ride it? <laughs> you know? No, yeah, that's no, cool. No. But, it's, yeah, it's cool really, that you retain the yeah. same look too, my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, if reaction, I saw you on a BMX bike, I would skid my tires and roll the window down. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. that's what was happening, man. Like we, you know, it was really weird to get that reaction. I mean, we're just, we're just riding our bikes, you know. Like you know, that's here, awesome. You know, but there, man, they like didn't you know? They were wondering what, what, where are you from? What is that you're riding? Love it. Where, where do I get it or whatever? You know, it was really, you know, pretty strange. Remember that, Toby? Yeah, they had they had a bike called the Chopper, and they were doing hundred thousand of those a year, and they were worried about BMX and how it would affect the sales of that bike. Going back to the whole corporate world of all this, right? Mm. And uh, and they and we didn't really know what we got ourselves involved in, but they basically took us down to the factory and they said, "Hey, we got this bike called the Chopper." They go, "The bike works great in this lab." Right. And but they're breaking. We don't understand. You know, they're starting to break. But so they we go in the lab and they have this chopper on this wooden wheel going around like this with bumps. And it's got all these like sandbags hanging on it. Remember, Jeff? And the bike yeah. across this, and they're like, it doesn't break. I said, give me one. Right? They gave That's me how one. they were testing it. They were <laughs> testing it. I'm in the room. I just buddy hop. And back then I could buddy hop over a high hurdle, right? What? I just buddy hop. And I did everything I could and slam the thing down three pieces. Okay, we gotta oh, it's oh three my pieces. gosh. One bunny hop. Anyway, so That's like they looked at us like, okay, so the next day they said, okay, we want you guys to go on some field and ride the chopper. And they put the stand on our backs the size of a VCR, right? And this is Raleigh of England. And this is what the same, the same thing they used in the Tour de France that was on the back of Yup Zeltemuk's bike was this controlling box underneath the seat and all the wires ran to all the stress points of the frame. Oh. They, but then they put this BCR thing on our back. Yeah. It's like, go jump. <laughs> and we did. And then I kept breaking the head cotter pin cranks. The cranks couldn't stay up, right? But anyway, and they, and they were getting all the feedback with the digital like heartbeat thing. So they were talking 1980, 79, 1980. Yeah, that right? was they were doing data acquisition then. Yeah. yeah. Man. Wow. With, with, a, with, with a BCR on your back. With, with a 30 pound BCR <laughs> on your back. That's hey, did hey, did you design your own bikes? Because they didn't, 
they weren't really did you make your own bikes is that how they you know well, we did have bikes made by the raw by the road factory the little shop at the factory gotcha. and they fell apart jeff was smart he didn't jump his mine fell apart pretty quickly <laughs> jeff still has his probably anyway um no they made it for us and they were way off the, the jump she was all wrong the entire time we rode for raleigh we rode mongooses uh yeah well, they look like they look good, and and with the yellow tough wheels you guys ran, they look fantastic, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, of all the bikes you guys rode back in the day, uh, you know your DGs, your whatever else, what were the bikes that you you liked the most in your career? What was the bike that you really liked the most? <laughs> hey, Jeff, of all the bikes that you rode back in the day, what uh, what bike did you like the boat the most? What was the best bike for you? Well, the Webco. Was uh was about the best, but to tell you the truth, that Grosswin monoshock <laughs> was pretty nice, man. <laughs> you know, that That's thing great. was nice. But uh, <laughs> I'll tell you the, the two that I didn't like was the uh, Gary Little John and uh, the Stroker two. Oh, the you Stroker, know? this mild steel frame with the yeah. square tubing. Although Brian Lewis could ride it pretty good, but I didn't like mine at all. You know, well, it, it was fourteen inch high bottom bracket, I think. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, really high bottom bracket, and um, it's just the steering angle was cut was pretty stiff, was pretty uh, straight up and down, and it just it wasn't comfortable. Now the web when I got a Webco, that thing rode nice, you know, and then the DG, of course, my DG, I loved it. So that's why you know, Jeff's career was like in, before mine. We had two different kind of eras where we had the overlap, but his stuff was kind of before me. I rode stuff after Jeff, yeah. right? It's kind of right you know you know it's yeah. Yeah, it's crazy right because the the bikes that Jeff's okay. describing there was, was so that? much um like it was such a developmental era of the sport right there were so many weird i mean they were transitioning from full suspension bikes to hardtails and square tube round tube uh, all different types of materials all kinds of stuff they were exploring similar to what mountain bike was in the probably late 80s early 90s yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and these and these and these guys were all grad racer, all car guys that were making these bikes. Mm. Dan Gurney, Gary Littlejohn, Gary Turner—they're all car guys. Because who was making chromoly tubes? Who was welding chromoly tubes together back then? Right, right. Hey, right. Toby. So, what was your favorite bike of all the bikes that you rode? Would you yeah, say? I, I, I mean, Hutch. That's why I think it's not fair to kind of compare. Jeff and I, because his bikes were at a different time and my bikes were a different period. Mm -hmm. My hutch was probably the best. And when I went to ride for SC, I wasn't real happy about the SCs. I struggled with them. I wound up on a Patterson at one point with, with, with haulers, you know, my signature on the side of it. So, but the hutch, yeah, that, that definitely was the bike that I did all my winning or did my best on for sure. You know, so. Well, well, you, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. Oh, I'm sorry. Greg. Well, no, no, you, I was going to say that there's a, um, you, cause there was a Henderson Hauler SE bike, right? Yeah, it was the very first Taiwan bike that um, that uh, SE made. Gotcha. It was an overseas bike that they brought in. Yeah. It was actually not bad. It was chromoly, it had good parts, but the geometries, you just, back then, you know, reading drawings and getting the bikes the way you want, you used to make them here, fabricating yeah. the way you want, then you send yeah. one over there and it comes over here, not what you want, right? Especially when it was, yeah, and, there, and that wasn't when you had internet or Skype or anything like that, right? So, right. I mean, Right. Did you it's, have any say in that bike, Toby? Any, um, you uh, know? The, the graphics, basically. Okay. I didn't really have much to do with the spec or anything like that. And it was mm. supposed to be modeled after, after a Patterson, which at the time were really good bikes, right? And uh, yeah. I don't think it came in that way. That's why I got a Patterson. They put the graphics on the Patterson <laughs> and wrote the Patterson. Here, Jeff and Toby here, I have a question for you. Since you guys really are from two separate eras, uh, what I want to know is, what what was the biggest change you saw from when you started riding to when you ended riding racing competitively? What was the biggest change that you saw in the bicycle design? And I want Jeff to go first since you were, you know, early on. And then Toby, you can bring us right up to today. Yeah. So, so Jeff, okay. what was the biggest change you saw in bicycles okay. from well, when you started what, racing to you quit racing? Now, okay, what 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 uh what I experienced and what when we first started racing, we were racing coaster brakes, mm. you know, and like one piece cranks, you know, with, with like heavy gauge spokes. And, you know, and then so what happened was uh, after, well, you know, racing for Webco, you know, and then when I got on DG, 
uh, Steve Skibel's dad uh, gave me a bike. Okay, I was right, you know, I was like running one piece cranks, you know, heavy. So he, so I go down to DG and, and Steve Skibel's dad gives me a bike. It's fully campied out, uh, campy hubs, campy cranks, 10 speed chain, you know, it, it, it was like five, five or six pounds lighter than my previous bike. And uh, we were just getting ready to go on tour in summer of 76. Well, when I got, that's the bike that I rode or I won, that I like won the Cal California Cup with, uh, won the, the Orange Bowl. I won like all in 76, summer 76, I won all these, all those races on that new bike. And that was, you know, like I said, that was aluminum cranks with, you know, going from one piece cranks to aluminum. Um, so the, the, that was the biggest transformation. But then after that summer, everybody else got them and then, uh, everybody was like up to my speed you know <laughs> jeff, do you, you guys, jeff do you think are you the first one you think of the of you know the core group that had like the new the new style of bike yeah well i mean uh i believe so because uh um like i'm thinking i'm just thinking right now to myself i know Stu still had a one piece cranks like when we went to uh, when we went on tour uh on his dg he had like you know still had the one piece cranks I think we we're just getting to a well, and then the, and the closer break alone weighed like two pounds, you know. Yeah, that, those things were and, heavy. And it was in the wheel too. Yeah, it was in the wheel. Yeah, so, uh, right. So you know, with with the uh, with going to those campy hubs, oh man, that bike was so sweet, dude. It was like night and day difference, you know. Hey, hey, James, you had a cheater think, bike, bro. Uh, James, I think it's a good question because Jeff was probably the smoothest, lightest guy riding a bike in that time. When the racetrack was finesse and the racetrack was skill, it was Jeff. Racetrack was power, and yeah, maybe Stewart, right? But Jeff right. won races and rode bikes differently than anybody else at that time. That's how he could run a campy crank. Yeah. That, that's my opinion, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a full, yeah, like a road crank. Yeah, you know, it was full road crank. And it, I imagine it was probably square taper um, spindle as well, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah well, Euro bottom bracket. Well, you know, see now that, that that's when they, I got the bike. They had the DG1, which came with the yeah European bottom bracket. Yeah, you know, it was a Chapotima replica, and <laughs> and that, that's you know that's they gave me like Steve gave me that bike, and it was a whole it was a whole package. You know, it was the Chapotima replica DG1 with the uh, European bottom bracket. So you couldn't jump it. I mean, it wasn't a bike you'd want to take out during the week and jump. But I had my I, but I had my you know had a. A, a jumping bike where I had a bike that I rode around with the big bottom bracket, but Everybody that's when it came thrasher. out. With, yeah, Thrasher, you know, but uh, but that that's when they came out with that that model bike, you know, and so it was sweet and uh, it was tough, man. I you know, like I said, racing against those guys. What about like Coy Hudson, man? He was like six; he was even bigger than Stu, you know. And so there were some per couple pretty big guys back then, but you know, yeah. I just had to, uh, I had to, you know, like a lot of uh, a lot of my racing when I was racing, I would go. Like I would go up, um, like swoop them up from underneath, like uh, you know, make uh, score off the corner, you know, and yeah. come underneath. That's where that's where I would make uh, my moves. And also pre jumping back then, it was just coming into effect. Of course, Richie and Ronnie did it really well, but I I was doing it, you know, pre jumping was when you can catch the back end of the jump mm -hmm. and pedal, get some good pedals. That was a good way to uh, get some, you know, get some acceleration. Also, you know, C can you imagine now? knocking five pounds off of your bike holy cow it was yeah. i mean no, it was people time. are spending people are spending thousands and thousands of dollars for ounces yeah five pounds so so toby in your era from 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 that point when you started to to not now but when you quit racing what do you think was the biggest change you saw on bmx as far as bikes goes uh chromoly tubular chromoly cranks Round, uh, not KTT pedals anymore, hutch pedal, these kind of things, right? A, a nice chromoly panel bar, aluminum double clamp pro neck stems, these kind of things, right? Because that really made a big difference. And I was going to comment when Jeff bought the bike he rode and how excited he was about that. I got that same bike. I got a Jeff Latino bike from DG. I rode it down the block, but I can't ride it. I went right back to DG and we swapped the frame out for an American BB so I could put my one piece cranks back in. Right, mm. I couldn't ride the bike. I could, I could not ride the campy crank. Yeah, you know, for me. And well, so, yeah. but I think, I think the, the red line crank, <laughs> the red line floor, oh, yeah. you game know, changers too. Game changers. Stem, those, and then the hutch pedal, those kind of things, right? The red line one piece, red line spy, sprocket. You know, I used to, I had the same red line cranks, two pair, one eighty fives on my cruiser. <laughs> 
And <laughs> the ladies on my 20s, my entire career, same two pairs. Yeah. That's what about amazing. what do you, what about XL about but because didn't XL they, they had the, the free agent limo, you know, and then you had a lot of XLs, right? Bikes get longer. That was still in that time. That was yeah, I mean, right Hutch before was you, XL. you retired. Yeah. yeah, it was an XL bike. They were getting longer compared to all we were all right. we were for sure. The length, but the I, length, I think when yeah. we said technology, I was thinking more materials and things like that. But you're right, yeah. the length of the frames, sure. Yeah. Now, Toby, you are, you're in a unique position because you're really into what's going on in the racing today. So what do you think from the time that you quit racing until present day, what do you oh, think man. the biggest change has been? Well, clipless pedals for BMX, mm. uh, slick tires, right? And carbon frames, carbon rims, right? You know, hollow forge cranks. This gets pretty long, uh, instant engagement hubs. So, so those, so there's a ton of them really, you know, I, lock on grips. That's a mountain bike thing, but lock on grips, my God changed everything right yeah. <laughs> grips didn't turn <laughs> Whoop. yeah yeah <laughs> anyone that's ever raced in the rain and had that thing come off uh, this, this breaks now it's a common thing so i'm in the, i'm in you know you guys know i developed the bikes but but right now the kids are starting to use disc brakes little yeah. kids hey so i have a question for you both um you know you said that you guys were asked to come because you were buddies were you ever asked to go to another team as buddies hmm. No, we actually, I, I, I wanted to. When Jeff went to write for Murray, I was so jealous. <laughs> I was so jealous. I wanted to marry the team manager. Don't tell my wife. No, she knows. So, <laughs> so no, because that was like, that was like a posh ride Jeff got at that point. You that know, was I was riding for Hodge, small company. And, you know, I was used to the kind of Raleigh thing and, you know, and Jeff moves on to Murray and he's running around first class everywhere, rented cars. And I'm like, chucking myself across the country trying to win races so i wish i was able to follow but no we were never that lucky at that point other than the mountain bike we were on a mountain we were on iron horse together all right hey so, jeff how did that murray thing come about you know what's weird deal man because um weird i was doing that mountain dew bmx all-stars me and perry and jake amity going to elementary schools you know uh you know and so i was like without a ride but i was doing that you know and uh all of a sudden, uh, Scott Breinhoff called me up. It was like a four o'clock on uh, like a Friday afternoon. And he said, hey, you label team? I go, yeah. He goes, can you get down? He goes, we're in Fullerton right now at Murray. He goes, can you get down here before five? And I'm sitting there, you know, I, I, I go, yeah, I, I sure can. I literally jumped up, you know, jumped in my car. It's about, you know, five, or it's about 10 miles from me. But I got there at like 445. And um and there, there, there they were at Murray, and I literally showed up and I signed a contract. And the next uh, Monday, I was on a plane uh, to Nashville. <laughs> you know, only like, only Jeff Botina. Yeah. <laughs> they already, you know, Scott and Anthony already had been signed, and uh, they needed one. They wanted one more, and it was like a spur. I mean, like last minute thing. And uh, I guess if I wouldn't have made it there, there by five, I don't know if I would have still got the ride or not. <laughs> but hey, uh, those guys already it, signed a contract. It must be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, was, I was sponsored by, uh, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, we looked at your record. No, we looked at how close you were on the map and if you could make it here by five. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. As long as I made it there by five, I had to ride, you know. Sponsorship by proximity. <laughs> that's awesome. That is great. In your travels and all the stuff that you two did together. Did you guys ever fight with each other? Ever bicker? Yeah. Or... <laughs> Come on, yeah, man. <laughs> Did you guys ever get into it? Ever have, you know, leave one of you leave the other one at the airport or a hotel or anything? I don't think it's that bad, but uh, I, for Jeff probably doesn't remember. He might not admit to this, but in Australia, we weren't getting along very well. We had this, we weren't getting along. And uh, we had a treacherous thing, right? And uh, anyway, we had this car they gave us and Jeff keyed my name in the car to get me in trouble. <laughs> that is pretty work. good. See, he's not going to admit it, but I know he did it. Does he, you remember that, Jeff? Uh, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty, uh, I don't know. It was kind of, uh, <laughs> hey, you, you know, you know, in Australia, we were going out every night, but the people who are, the kids that were taking us out were like 13, 14 years old, and you can drink alcohol. There, there's no age limit. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you know, it could have been somebody else, but I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. I don't remember. 
I don't remember. But I don't want to Good know. answer, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I don't remember either. Yeah, uh, Jeff's got it. his yeah. Jeff's got his glasses on like he's playing poker right now. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Took the insurance anyway, you out. Know, so. When we in 1980, we went on tour together. Jeff, I, Perry Kramer, and a guy named Carl Grinner who wrote for Bassett, and we were we're fine. We're driving the NBL tour right in the SE van. Four of us sleeping on the floor, taking turns driving, right? A tour for three months. By the third day, we're like, we're not, where do you want to eat? We're not getting along. No one's getting along, right? So we went to the store and bought two pair of boxing gloves and four mouthpieces. And it's a true story. This and anytime great. there was a disagreement, I want Carl's Jr., I want McDonald's, Van pulls over, the two dudes get out, put their own mouthpieces in, get the two gloves and box it out. I That's a Miranda move I right can, there. I ten on the side of the freeway. Cars are going by. There's the other side of the road. That is the that is the, that's, awesome. that's how we settle <laughs> the entire tour. We settle all arguments or disagreements with boxing gloves. You remember that, Jeff? Yeah, I do remember that. And Perry Kramer got knocked out, fell on somebody's TV at their house, and broke the TV and all this stuff in the basement of uh, Mel Goody's house in New Jersey. We went to deciding something, and Perry's fighting Carl Grinner with his arms like Popeye, and he hit Perry. Perry falls, hits the TV, TV falls. You know. That is <laughs> that's awesome. Fucking awesome. <laughs> hey, there's some pretty good pictures from it. Uh, Kathy Hanna's house that we went, we stopped by. Remember that? Yeah, you know? the, we just floating those around. Well, my wife now. Um, is uh, was an MBL scorekeeper. It doesn't matter. So I met her when she was 16. I was 18. We got together about seven years ago. We tried to date then, but she was in Midwest. I was California. It didn't work out. We had different lives. Now we're together. Hey. And she's best friends with Kathy Hanna. Wow. And when we go to Midwest, Kathy Hanna's sister was the lead MBL scorekeeper. So we would wind up at Kathy Hanna's house and all these pictures of my wife's bringing Jail. up from the past, right? So is, yeah. is that when Perry Kramer knocked out Kathy Hanna with the boxing yeah. gloves? <laughs> Didn't <laughs> was Perry Kramer boxing Kathy Hanna with boxing gloves? You can probably get that. Kathy well, was, listen, the way I tell the way I heard it was Kathy Hanna knocked out Perry Kramer with boxing gloves. You might be right. I, well, that's the way that I'm right. going to tell the story from now on. Yeah, Jeff Motima. Oh, Jeff yeah. Motima told me Kathy Hanna knocked out Perry Kramer with that's boxing what gloves. Happened. <laughs> you can't let the facts get in the way of a good story there <laughs> hey, enough people say it it becomes the truth yeah. that's right oh man hey uh i do have a, a couple questions for they're kind of this one's a like one for one one question for toby and one question for jeff toby uh you were like the first guy i remember ever seeing with a bell helmet a bell three helmet the, the full face and you were you were sponsored specifically by Bell. Had a kind of a working deal with him, didn't you? Yeah, um, I was the first one to write for Bell, um, and it was it, I don't know how I don't remember how I wound up with it, but to, to kind of trump Jeff's Murray story, maybe. Um, well, some <laughs> of that went on too, <laughs> but to trump Jeff's Murray story, I just kind of fell into it, I think. But the weirdest thing about it was our best friend in high school's dad was the engineer at Bell. Bell helmets was you could throw a rock from Jeff's house and hit Bell helmets literally, right, Jeff? It was yeah. behind your house, Bell helmets, right? Right behind my house. And my oh. stepfather, Buddy, was the president, which they didn't even put it together till after I was there. So isn't oh, that crazy? Oh man! It was wow. really talk about Southern California cow pasture land, and you know, and it's it's you know Lakewood. Come on, Eric knows he knows about it. Yeah, so so totally that's bad. what it was, and and they were awesome, man. They handed me a big fat check and said, "I need you to wear this helmet," and which was in the Star Wars movie, the Moto Three was in the movie Star Wars, right? And then and then they basically, my friend's dad engineered the helmet. I remember seven layers for motocross, five layers for BMX, right? Handmade, yeah, yeah right there. And they took care of me for years, and I wore that thing, and it became. The helmet to beat at that point right yeah it was still i think mm. maybe the best looking full face helmet ever yeah. i bought i i wanted one so bad but we couldn't afford a brand new one so i actually we bought a used one from uh pete lonkarevich and his dad oh really <laughs> yeah i didn't i we couldn't afford it we, we were too poor we couldn't afford a brand new one man so, wow you got to use that 
Jeff, I got a story I want to ask you about. Okay. Dude, at some race somewhere, and I think we were at Gillies, you got stabbed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was, remember um, that. Okay, now here's the deal. Okay, I was, uh, okay, now uh, I had just retired. I went to work for Murray full time, and uh, it was um, it was St. Patrick's Day, and I, I was at a 10 speed race in Texas. Okay, and uh, we, we, we just did, it was, um, they were getting ready for the Olympics, which was later on that year, you know. So we fly into Dallas and uh, with, uh, with, with, with my boss and we go in there, we're uh, meeting with the road team, Murray road team. And, uh, you know, they're having, they're, they were having a little, not issues, but, but we came in to cheer them up, you know, take them out to dinner, whatever, you know. So we come in at St. Patrick's Day, um, we come in the hotel, check in. So uh, me and a few of the guys, we go down, we're gonna go to the Circle K, get some beer, you know. And, um, so we go down and uh, we're going to get some, we, I think we got Lowenbrow. I remember when Lowenbrow was like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went down, you know, we, we drove down in Circle K. We went right down the street from our hotel in down, downtown Dallas, you know, we're downtown Dallas. And um, there was some, uh, there were some hookers hanging out front, you know, and uh, we, I, while we walk in, no big deal, you know, but, but my uh, one friend that, or one guy on the team, he uh, walks in and uh, I think she asked him, hey, you know, hey, you looking for some action? And, and he goes, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't fuck you if you're the last bitch on earth, you know? And uh, and he goes, man, do you, can you believe that shit? I'm going, dude. I go, dude, did you see the guys in the parking lot? I go, I'd be careful if I were you, man. Just, you know, some some of their, their I guess their pimps or whatever are hanging out in the parking lot. So when we, uh, we go in, you know, so we buy her, get a beer, you know, get our beer. And we come out and, um, and so when we go out to our car, the, uh, there's three guys, man, hanging out, and he's driving, and I'm on the uh, passenger side. And uh, we're, it's a brand new, it's a Lincoln Town car, you know. So uh, they're on my side of the car, and I'm kind of old. I got like two six packs of little bro. and uh, they go, "Hey, man, we, I want your money." I go, "Dude, I go, I just spent everything I had on this beer right here." I go, "You can have, you know, if you want my beer, you can have it, you know." And uh, so it, uh, also it, it comes with like a, a free, like it, it stops right there. And I didn't want to take my eyes off the guys, but I wanted, I'm trying to tell my buddy, unlock the fucking door, dudes. So it's automatic door locks. Unlock it. So at least I have a chance I can get in the car, you know? And he's, <laughs> he's in there frozen on the other side. And they're on, on the passenger side, on my side, talking to me, you know? And he's just in there froze, you know? So I had, I took my eyes off these guys to tell my friend, I go, hey, dude, unlock the door, you know? And when I did that, they lunged at me and I thought they were just grabbing my beer, you know? And uh, they lunged at me and it took off. And I and, and it slid me like up to the front of the car, like by the front tire, by the hood. So I put the beer on the hood, and he goes, hey, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" I go, "Yeah, man, I'm okay, but I think I broke a couple bottles because I'm all wet. You know, I'm getting all wet." And I looked down, I looked up my shirt, and it's just blood everywhere. You know, and I just butt my, I just buckled, man. I, I just like a piece of spaghetti, you know. So uh, he got me in the car. And uh, end up, he ended up burning out, taking off, and it got pulled over right away. And they ended up calling an ambulance, and they finally, you know, finally got me to the hospital. But I, the guy stabbed me with an ice pick in the liver, but I never Ooh. felt it. I never, I never felt it, you know. So, uh, wow, yeah, you know, it was ter terrible. When I woke up four days later, I see Toby and Jeff Rubiner, and then my family is there. But Toby and Jeff Rubiner was there, you know. But uh, yeah, I got stabbed in the liver. I had my lungs collapse. Um, yeah, I was. What, you were in Houston, Jeff. That happened in Houston or Dallas? I forget. Houston. What's that? It happened Houston. in Houston or Dallas? Houston, so, I think. No, Dallas. It was Dallas. Okay, oh, so Dallas. I was in Houston at Gillies. The yeah. Place. Oh, Gillies. I had a yeah. Call from Jeff's mom and dad. Just happened to Jeff. This is like midnight or whatever on the Saturday night or Friday night, whatever it was. And they said, "You're right by him. We're in California. Can you get there?" Right. So I said, yeah, I'm on my way. I just went straight to the airport and flew from wherever, where Houston at Gillies National. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Flew to Dallas. I remember walking in and seeing him. He looked like Pillsbury Doughboy because he's full of blood inside of his body. He bled all inside of his body. Oh, yeah. So I was crazy. Get there. I, was, I just happened to be, you know, an hour plane flight away. Right. So <laughs> that's still that's a good friend. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and I just want to say for the record to JV and EC, if you're ever battling with hookers and a pimp stabs you, I'm going to come see you. Because <laughs> that, that, that's the kind of friendship we have. Yeah. Yeah. But if, only if it's one hour. Only hey, if it's within yeah, one if hour. If it's a one hour flight and you and you have low and brow and you get stabbed by a pimp, 
You know what, buddy? I want you. you. Yeah, you know what, buddy? I want you to be. I want you to be the buddy that unlocks the fucking door. <laughs> yeah, 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 please, that, that, please, yeah. come on. Please unlock the door, dude. If you guys, well, card, you know, man. <laughs> that was everything right there, too. Believe it or not, crazy. Man. Yeah. I could have dove in, you know. Oh, well, awesome. well, I think he just got stabbed. I think the ghost of Mark Mike got him. <laughs> some pimp, Mike. some pimp just unplugged his <laughs> computer. <laughs> Okay. Told you not to tell that story again. <laughs> oh, oh man, I hope he knows no. just to. Oh, I hope he makes it back. Oh, that's funny, so, guys. dude. I'll, I'll tell you what. This. Hey, let me tell you right now. Right now, solid gold. Oh, this is- solid gold, man. Good shit. <laughs> oh, and shit. Eric eats too. What you see? What do you got over there? During these, my God, What's that macaroni. I- it's a bowl of chili, bro. Oh, you got chili. <laughs> hey, so we got some feedback from our buddy Bob Horn, the uh, former Skyway CW writer. He gets me. He goes, "Hey, man, you will love the show. You guys are doing a great job. Every episode, it seems like it just gets better and better." And he goes, "But you know, I was gonna, I, I was gonna give a little piece of advice. If you wanted to, you know, just class it up a little better. You know, bring it up one more notch. Tell EC not to eat while he's doing the show." <laughs> Yeah, I I just started laughing. I said, yeah. "No way, man! That's that's all yeah. part of the show. That's part." Wow. Chili's even amazing. Yeah. Tacos, yeah. Right? Bob, this chili is amazing. <laughs> Maybe it's chili. So. Oh man, hey, did did sis make that chili? She did. Then I know it's amazing. Oh, dude, I my my wife knows how to rattle pans, dude. Oh man, she can get after it in the kitchen, man. She can I'm get spoiled. after it in the kitchen. Her spaghetti sauce off the charts. Yeah, I'm a, I am spoiled. Nice, no nice. nice. Although I do spoiled. love eating at your mom's house because she lives right by McGill's Jr. Yes, <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> so I always, whenever I go to see his mom, I say, Hey, can I, I'm gonna bring you lunch, I'm gonna bring you dinner just so I can eat McGill's Jr., my favorite Mexican restaurant. It's the best. Well, let's see. Uh, I don't know if he's going to come back on or not. <laughs> hey, we got him for an hour. We did yeah. good. He did good. Yeah. Listen, he, that's probably he what may, he thought. He probably thought far, it was over. He may be on his way to the emergency room. I don't know. <laughs> oh, here he comes. <laughs> back? Here he comes. There's his iPhone. Oh, man. So, so good. <laughs> mm. Oh. That was a funny story. He's figuring it out. Oh, man. Oh, listen. I thought uh, it was going to be a lot dirtier, but okay. Oh, no. Hey, I'm not done yet. I got some good ones. I got a couple good questions. Oh, there he is. Hey, yes. hey we thought you might have gone to the hospital. He's got his glasses off. Yeah, he has uh, to see. Yeah, I yeah. told him he should wear his hat and his glasses to give us that look, right? That's right. Perfect. He followed instructions pretty well. Hey, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> hey, you know what? At least his hair is still the same color it was when he was 19. Yeah. I know, I know right? And the same amount. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting him. Oh, yeah. Glasses yeah. are on. It's serious now. <laughs> oh, nope. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. Hey. There you go. Hey. There yeah. you go. My phone died. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to lie to us. We know you went out for some low and brow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I had to go pound one real quick. Oh no, I did get a pizza though. <laughs> of course, of course you did, Spicoli. Of course. Isn't that our pizza? It's our pizza, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Han. Right, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Spicoli. Oh no, Mr. Han. Oh man. Hey man, my dad's got an awesome set of tools. He's a Hebrew repair man. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Hey, I'm supposed to ask you guys about cruising in a convertible Cadillac that belonged to Bernie Anderson from ABA. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to ask yeah. you about some story about that. What happened We're, there? They, uh, well, we put the top down and it broke the back window. <laughs> oh, we, did. we had a bike in the back, I think. Our helmet was a helmet. So yeah, something was in the back where, where the where the where the top goes down into, and it, it snapped, broke his back window, man. And I guess those are pretty expensive. Yeah, <laughs> Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, uh, El Dorado. I don't remember if it had the horns on the front or not, but I was at the Texas oh. BMX Hall of Fame, 
about a month and a half ago where Bernie and VA got inducted, you know, in Lifetime Achievement Awards. So I got on stage and spoke about my experience, experience hanging out in San Antonio with the Andersons, now the owners of USA BMX, right? Anyway, and that's the story I told. So Jeff and I land, get off the plane, Bernie picks us up, he gets us home, introduces the family, whatever, he says, he takes a straight line, he took us straight to a Texas, you know, store and buys two 10 gallon hats, right? <laughs> so whichever hat you want, boys. So we went in, we each picked a hat, big old hat, and we go home and he shows us, he's got the Cadillac, and he says, okay, here's $100 each, Here's the keys of the car. Go tear up the town. Right, Jeff? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, what? He's like, we picked the keys of the Cadillac and we, the hundred bucks each, out the door we went with our hats on. Right? <laughs> and we tore the town up. I guess broke a window on top of that. But hey, wow. I yeah. think, I think, I think my hat was a Stetson too, to tell you the truth. You picked a better hat than I did for sure. You have yeah, more I... style than me. You're supposed yeah, to be the Coca-Cola cowboy yeah, now. Exactly. I, I don't yeah. know what that's about. So. What the heck did you guys have? Like, I, I, I'm be curious of what your rea- when you heard that window bust. What oh, must have? Yeah. Oh, it, it was like it. it so I, I sunk, man. When I heard it bust, I knew right away. You know, like, oh my god, we just broke that back window out. You know. <laughs> So we just left the top down and just cruised on, just yeah. kept cruising. <laughs> well, that lasted funny. about one minute. How I know this is BA, I was just in Texas and BA told me, don't you remember breaking the window? And he said a helmet. That's how I knew oh. that. And I kind of forgot that. He said, you guys left the helmet up in the back like area. And when the top went down, the helmet, it couldn't go down because the helmet. <laughs> AC? Yeah. 200 bucks buys a lot of blowing brow. That's right. That's right. Jeff spent his on hookers. Yeah. Right. Hey, we hey we had a good time in San Antonio. Let me tell you. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet you did. Well, yeah, the we, locals we, took us out to a place. They said that it's this downhill thing. You ever heard the story with the school bus where the kids get run over the railroad track? And it's an uphill, but the the car goes the other way. We took the El Dorado there and parked it on the railroad track. It's, it's like okay the car is supposed to go off the railroad tracks basically you look at it but it doesn't it goes away on the railroad tracks it's this phenomenon it's a, it's a basically uh that's what i'm looking for it's, a, it's an illusion optical illusion yeah, yeah optical delusion yeah, anyway, yeah it's optical that, delusion all right we did that with it and we had low and brow probably at the same time. <laughs> that helped our lone star whatever they drink back then that's amazing. Oh man. Uh BR BR Anderson, who I went on tour with, t- wanted me to ask you about that car. How, how what happened with it? He, it was, he was laughing. Eldorado, the big Eldorado white with white interior. You're like boss hog. Did, did, it have, did it have bullhorns on the front, Jeff? Do you remember? Well, um, I think it did. I think it did. <laughs> hey, it, it does now. Yes. <laughs> you should find that car. Hey, hey Toby, somebody else uh, reached out to me and asked, how did you get the, oh, Mike Miller, our buddy Mike Miller asked, how'd you get the nickname Coca-Cola Cowboy? Jesus. You know, Mike, I, 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 I didn't know until basically a year ago. And Isaac, Isaac's last name, but he's from um, Big BMX Bikes podcast guy. Big and Bike BMX, our buddy Isaac. Isaac yeah, and Craig. Isaac. Okay, great. And uh, he basically tracked Oz down and found out why. So when this happened, Jeff and I, back before I lost my number one plate, the very first thing James spoke about, I should have had number one that year. It's a long story. We don't get the racing, but, but anyway, Oz took us to dinner, me and Jeff. I didn't know Oz. He's more closer to Jeff. We're riding for Raleigh, and he wants to take us to dinner. And I distinctly remember ordering Dr. Pepper. Right, so I, I don't have any. So the next week or so, I'm the Coca-Cola cowboy, and everybody's like, "Where did that come from?" So the story goes, it's a little embarrassing, but at the time, according to Isaac, not Oz, who I now that I have BMX action, which we haven't talked about, but I've been to Oz's house a couple times in the last year, right? And uh, anyway, um, according to Isaac, Oz told him that he was looking for a name. At the time, the Rhinestone Cowboy was huge hit. And he thought he was looking for a, I was flamboyant and these things, and he needed a name. And, but the right, he still Cal, so he just said Coca-Cola Cowboy, it just popped in his head oh. and he started writing it. Never liked the name. And when I became Captain Elbows, I'm like, finally, 
<laughs> George Costanza being called popcorn. Wasn't one of you know the yes. George Costanza got the nickname. Yeah, yeah. You know, T-bone, T-bone, T-bone. 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 <laughs> I got the T-bone name. Yeah. Got rid of Coca-Cola Cowboy. Who who wants the nickname Captain Elbows though? I did. I thought it was the best thing ever. <laughs> oh man, I always thought you know uh, Coca Cola Cowboy because you were all American, man. Especially when you when you were on Hutch with the with the stars on, you were you were the all American kid, man. Yeah, I, yeah but and then I heard I then wanted, I started. I wanted the writers to fear me, not to make fun of me. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. That's when Captain Elbows came out. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah, well, that's when the Captain Elbows came out. You're right, EC. It was fitting, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I was. And Stuart still said today, you know, the frog town race we were all at. Stuart said we said I love hanging out with the old guys. It's it's probably the most awesome thing in my life right now is to hang out with Stuart and Greg and these guys, Perry. Because back then it wasn't the camaraderie wasn't there. Right. But now it is. Right. And Stuart and I did along really well. We were both doing really well at that race. It was kind of me and him at that event. He was fucking going around your elbows. You know, he still remembers. <laughs> I have to go around my elbows, right? Because he spent a lot of time going around my elbows. So it's amazing. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, um, bringing it bringing it up to date. There's a couple of things I want to make sure I cover, and that is, uh, you were talking about Frogtown, and we're we're uh, we talked. To- I talked to Huff today and we're super excited that we're working together. And, and uh, you, you guys may not know that we have our own, we're going to have our own vintage BMX event here in Southern California called the dirty fest. And it's going to be at Vail at Vailocity, which is the, the KOA campground in Temecula. And it's going to be at the end of April. And, uh, you know, obviously you guys will be there. It's going to be awesome to have you battling here in Southern California once again. And maybe we'll even get, Battling Botima out there. Oh. Yeah, man. We got, a, we got a bike for him if he wants one. Yes. There you All go. right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not a mono sure. shock, but yeah, it's no yeah. Schwinn girls mono shock, but you know it'll. You know. Dude. <laughs> hey man, it doesn't hey, happen. Like... I heard you guys were doing that. I remember racing the Troy Lee e bike race out there, and, and I haven't been to. I only ridden you know your place, Eric, a couple times. Yeah. But that dirt, it's soft and kind of rocky. You know what I mean? And I raced the time I raced there. It was kind of wet. Had been rained, right? Or I don't think what it was wet. The dirt yep. was bitching. Yeah. So I can imagine what you can do. Oh, that. it's amazing. It's done. Yeah, it's, and and I have. Uh, you, I'm super blessed, Toby. I got any piece of equipment that I want. Yeah. So I, I quite honestly, the track is. It's already ninety percent done. Okay. We've I'm been riding it. It's it is a blast to ride, Toby. Hey, no fair pre riding. I'm not going to be no. in your class if you're pre riding. Hey, I got to do something to get around Captain Elbows. That's right. <laughs> and battling Botima. Come on, we yeah, got to have right. got to have something. A lot, of hey, flat, so- a lot of flat turns, a lot of a lot of you know, I I watched the the Frogtown racing and and man, those last couple of turns there were so many moves because the way those turns were designed. Yeah. You know, it's like you go inside, you push wide. So, I didn't try to reinvent the wheel on that. So there's a bunch of stuff like that that makes it really really fun, but you know, it's it's slightly downhill. So, you know, us old guys, it's not, we don't want to be racing on a flat track and have to pedal the whole time, you know, against gravity. So it's going to be fun. Brother, you are going to, you're going to love riding down this track. It's a blast. There's just enough jumps and enough obstacles that are kind of, you know, flowy and natural that make it just a blast. It's like racing in the seventies. It's like going to that park, going to Little Lake Park in Norwalk and racing again. <laughs> Wait, no, that was Hollywood, but Little Lake is where Jeff won the money. That was Oh, there. yeah. That was where you won the money, Jeff, Little Lake. Yeah. yeah. I remember. I Honestly, I remember that. Oh, you remember Little Lake Park? In yeah. 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 Went there with McNeil. Huh. Wow. Oh, you survived? <laughs> hey, I, I believe <laughs> me. Believe it or not, I traveled a lot with Kevin McNeil okay. because my dad would give me you know, five bucks for gas and I gave it to Kevin. And so that, you know, I, I got, a, I got to go a lot of places, but believe it or not, I was a shy kid back then, man. I, I hadn't, I hadn't blossomed quite yet. You hadn't Hollywooded yet. I hadn't Hollywooded yet. <laughs> hey, so again, bringing it back up to date, what's happening today. Uh, I got to ask Toby, tell me about. Oh, shit. yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been that the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> tell us about BMX Action. That's a long story. Um, yeah, so when we started ABC, um, we were, you know, looking at what we're going to do with the company, how we're going to do things, and 
one of the things was to give back with all the things that the sport had given us. And as I was doing trademarks and get, we bought Racing Inc., we bought Cook Brothers, a little bit of finagle there, but we came across that BMX Action had been kind of um, uh, just let, abandoned by Chris Moeller. And so this thing was kind of open. So it was easy to get. It wasn't a big deal, but we spent a ton of money at dealing with the government and turning it into 501c3 as our opportunity to give back to the industry, right? Mm. So we already have all these brands. I got a bunch hey. of you guys all know that. And hey, uh, we wanted this to be that. So when I realized it was available, we grabbed it. We started the 501c process. And we called Oz and did his <laughs> blessing. He says, you know, honestly, I flew there to kind of tell him. <laughs> That could be shaky ground, right? You know, it's like, how's he really going to feel about this? Yeah, he could, that could have gone either way, really. He right, could have been, right. It could have gone either way, like you said. But I was willing to head it back to Oz and just I just kept it out of At the time, as pre-COVID, all this trademark grabs were going on. And I was working with the Pattersons, and they wanted me to do something for them. And some guy had bought the name down in Laguna Beach. So I talked to my attorney. Attorney says, you know, it's really not you. You should probably have the Pattersons. Go after the guy. So I called Brent and said, Brian, hey, you guys should go get your name back. And they never did anything with it. And the guy wanted to get it. But there was a lot of that kind of going on. So I was willing to give it back to Bob if it's something he wanted. And you know what he said? He said, if anybody would have it, I'm glad it's you. Right? So it was like, you know, left there going, Whoa! right? I wasn't so sure. So I got with my wife, what are you going to do with this now? <laughs> right? So uh, we got some things in the iron, in the fire. We got a couple of things that it turns out to be really big. But the one thing that we've been asked most is to bring back a magazine, which I, I have no idea how to do. It's not my wheelhouse, not going to do it personally, but there's people interested. I'm talking to them. We keep it in the 501c3. The umbrella you're seeing in the back, what we've been doing is funding all this momentum through merch, right? And from that, you know, we're hoping one of our goals is, is and if you guys were at the BMX Society event that we sponsored last year, one of the things that BMX Action did for a lot of people changed their lives. I mean, that's the story you get. It changed people's lives. Right? Yeah. And, and some of the stories, and one of Bob's best friends who writes Bob's books now was a kid at eight years old who had arthritis, right? And his, he was so into the magazine, he read it every single day. Awesome guy, Kevin. And uh, he worked for Microsoft now. And, uh, and his uncle, I think, or his mom and dad, didn't want him to have a bike, but the uncle bought him a bike, right? And they're like, what are you doing? The kid has arthritis. He's basically in a, in a wheelchair. The kid got on the bike and started riding a little bit each day. And he yeah. wrote arthritis right out of his body. Phenomenal. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that so is what, awesome. We, so th that story is said multiple times, you know, throughout this whole <laughs> collaboration with the magazine and what it did for a lot of people, the right. bike, BMX, right? Anyway, so we decided the 501C's mission was to give bikes to people who have some type of illness and the, and the bikes would change their lives. Like Parkinson's victims, mm. uh, patients on the back of a tandem, they say, if you put a Parkinson's person on the back of a tandem, you ride for three hours on the back, they're up to three days completely um, uh, uh, free from the, from the disease and that slowly comes back, right? Mm. So something about being out. Yeah, it's a true story. It's all really there. amazing. Yeah. Um, Davis Finney's all into this. Davis Finney's into trying to figure out how this works. He's funding a bunch of this stuff. But supposedly, if you're on the, you ride a bike, which you can't if you have Parkinson's, so you have to be on the right. bike. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, if you ride the bike, you know, it's supposedly, you go out for a three hour ride, it's up to three days that Parkinson's kind of resides, right? So anyway, that's amazing. Well, that, to, that's fantastic. Of those kind of, you know, patients or those kind of stories, right? That's awesome. Well, you guys yeah. will hear at the end of this podcast, our very first commercial commercial that we do is always for the Davis Finney Foundation to make a donation on behalf of John Cruz, right. our, our, our buddy and my hero, uh, because he is living with Parkinson's and, and thanks Toby for what you do for the charity as well. It's, it's awesome, man. It just tells what, what kind of, what kind of great guy you are. And thanks for, uh, listen, Thanks. It is. And Oz was right. For all, anyone to have that magazine, it should be you, the Coca-Cola Cowboy. The Coca-Cola Cowboy. Yeah, right. Not <laughs> Captain <laughs> Elbows. Not Captain Elbows. No, I think it's, yeah, I think it's perfect. I think you're the perfect person to have it too, man. Because, uh, you know, you, you do, 
you, you pick up the football and you run with it, man. You got, you, you got a lot of initiative and you, uh, a lot of go. And so I think, and, and you're passionate about everything you do, you're passionate about and you, and you, you push hard on everything and um, you're still immersed in the BMX world. So I think it's the, the best fit. I think you like, I think Oz nailed it, that there couldn't be a better person that, that took that brand uh, that iconic brand and, and went with it, especially with what you're building, you know, that little empire that you're building now. Hey, listen, Hey, Toby, I have a question <laughs> just for you. You know, uh, I, I used to read the magazines, like, like most guys, I read all the pages of the magazines. And I noticed there were, a, there was a lot of fan mail for Toby Henderson and it seemed to mostly come from females. So I was, I was just curious, did any of those go from fan mail to hook up? Um, unfortunately not <laughs> come on coca-cola cowboy <laughs> no I, hey we're on the dirty knob show if i was t- if i had it i'd tell it man right now so <laughs> it didn't well, but I, I do have a fun story was uh i was at home back when we had phones that had 100 year long 100 foot cords that were yellow and all that working on my bike in the garage and the phone was hooked to the kitchen right that kind of thing right and my mom was like, this girl's on the phone again. This girl's on the phone again. I'm like, I don't want to talk to some girl calling from the East Coast, right? Anyway, finally, I said, I got, I'll talk to this girl. So this is like a week of this. She's calling two times a day looking for me. And um, so I killed the phone. First, I said, how do you get my number? I was pissed. Right? How do you get my number? I don't know who you are. She goes, well, when you were at New Jersey or whatever I was at race I was at, I got my bike boxes out of the trunk. And on the bike boxes, I had my name and phone number. Oh, written on the bike box, you know, on the canvas cover. Yeah. So I wouldn't lose them. Well, only call my mom if I lose my bike, right? <laughs> so anyway, so I started Stalker, talking. stalker creeper. Yeah, she was stalking me, right? Yeah, but uh, no, because think about it. We didn't have email. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have GPS. The only way- Well, the three of us like, didn't no, have fan no. mail. <laughs> so- yeah, anyway, so I don't know. I think that's where the whole Coco Cowboy thing came with Oz because he kept getting all this fan mail, right? But uh, <laughs> sorry to say no, didn't happen. I did marry Jeff's boss, though. That did happen. That was the Yes, story. you did. Yep. <laughs> and and the number two scorekeeper. And the, and the number two scorekeeper, yeah. <laughs> today, still today. Thank God for that one. And by the way, she is awesome. Uh, yeah, she is. When, when we were up in Frogtown and we did our live event, she came over to us and said, you guys are great. This was fantastic. She so, actually had more fun there than I did. <laughs> yeah. So we know we've got at least one fan in the Anderson yes, household. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, listen, uh, uh, from all three of us, man, I just want to say uh, I appreciate that both of you came on and that you, you, you did the Dirty Knobs with us. And uh, it's just an awesome to call you both friends. And uh, man, I'll let these two guys say goodbye. And I just want to say thank you, man. My pleasure. Man. Yeah, Toby. It, I mean, if, growing up, uh, I think I've told you this off of uh, the show before, but you, you, Jeff uh, and Tinker, you guys were like legends in my neighborhood, man. Like literally, because, you know, we grew up in the same, basically in the same community in those cow pasture, you yes. know, those dairy farm areas. Um, <laughs> And we used to go on adventures, man. We would literally ride from my house in Lakewood um, off of Delamo Boulevard. And we would ride towards your, towards where we thought you guys lived, searching for you guys. Right. And um, stalker creeper. Wait, wait, We're wait. Stalker creeper. And we found <laughs> you guys, you guys had a quarter pipe at the end of the cul-de-sac. Yes. And we found that. So we knew you guys lived. We didn't know which house you guys lived in, but right, we knew right. Because yep. there was a legend that there was a quarter pipe at the end of a cul-de-sac, and yep. that's what you guys rode. Yep, and we found house, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we waited. We would ride around in the neighborhood waiting for you guys, and we never got to see you guys come out, but we actually would ride from my house over in Lakewood over to where we thought you guys lived. We finally found it. took weekends of adventure <laughs> on our bikes, man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, how many fan letters did you write? <laughs> <laughs> Masking as a girl? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Catfish? so crazy man it was it but yeah it was uh so you know it's i'm it's pretty cool that uh growing up you were one of the guys like that for me and now i mean we raced together a bunch we did uh, we raced in bmx but we really got to travel and see each other at a ton of races in the mountain bike stuff so um it's cool man i had i've had a blast with uh interacting with you in my career your career and 
sponsored me dude did a signature helmet with me we go yeah. we go way back man i, I yeah. really appreciate um you supporting me but also supporting the sport so thank you so much toby no i appreciate that eric it means a lot coming from you yeah. for sure yeah i mean for me i'm you know as an east coast guy i didn't have as much exposure you know to to you guys and and i think toby you know you retired right around you know for sure jeff did jeff wasn't you know, really around when I first started, he was already, you know, had, had kind of got out of the sport. Um, but, but you were just leaving when I was, when I was coming in. So it didn't get to, to meet you or spend too much time. I, you know, I told Greg Hill this and I, and, uh, sent him a note after, you know, we had our, our show. And I said, you know, I, I regret, you know, not approaching and, and, you know, saying hi earlier, like when I was younger and, and, and racing. And I feel the same way too, with you and a lot of the people that we talked to. I mean, I wasn't like that, you know, I wasn't, I didn't kind of reach out too much, you know, except for, you know, if it was with Mike or, or EC, cause I was friends with them. So, you know, I would have a soldier, but I, but I would, you know, kind of, kind of regret not hanging out with you a little bit and um, got to, got to really say hi to you at Frogtown. But, uh, but yeah, thank you for coming on. It's been great. Jeff, I got one story I got to tell about you. And it has to do with that number 25, that number 25 berm shot you did that Toby was talking about earlier. And we'll put a picture of it up here. Jeff, I want to tell you that uh, it was Andy Zerzo and I were at uh, Narler Park and Oz asked us to come and do a berm shot to show how to roost the dirt up. And he wanted to take a picture of us. And it wasn't a big berm and there wasn't a lot of loose dirt. And we both tried like three or four times and it just, you know, it wasn't happening. We couldn't kick the dirt up. We couldn't make it look good. And you were looking at us and you were up on top of the, like uh, on top of the pro section and you looked down at us and you shook your head and you were in your, all your Murray gear and you shook your head and you rolled down super fast, laid your foot out, laid the bike down until the grip was hitting and roosted this big roost up. And I just remember looking at Andy and, he looked at me and we were like, damn, Jeff, you, uh, you were always a style God back then. And I can tell from your glasses and your visor and your hair, you're still the stylish guy that you were, man. So, uh, Hey, listen to both of you. Thank you so much for being on our show. And, uh, you are definitely dirty knobs. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it guys. Hey, dirty knobs. We're asking you, uh, our friends, to make a donation on behalf of John Cruz to the Davis Finney Foundation. And that can be done at davisfinneyfoundation.org. That's D-A-V-I-S-P-H-I-N-N-E-Y foundation.org. Listen, your, uh, your gift makes a difference. To, and together, we're helping people live better and building healthier Parkinson's communities. So... Listen, on behalf of John Cruz and the three of us here at the Dirty Knobs, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. I'm going to send a box out to somebody who subscribes. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors, speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love as they're showing it to us. Thanks again, and uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right. <laughs> Coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. It's no. perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack, you can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world, we're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares, 
your passion of cycling. We are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business, and we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California. With 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. Ultra Max Race Fuel. You can drink it before your moto. Or you can clean the train after the races. You can even put it in the rental car and it will do wheelies. So powerful, it cannot be made anymore. But you can still get it on Ultra Max t-shirt at dirtynob.com. Ultra Max Race Fuel. <laughs> oh, dude. I'm going to buy some just to rub it on me now. <laughs> With that voice, I'm just going to rub it all over me. <laughs> yeah, right. Hi, everybody. Toby Henderson, founder of Box, co-founder of American BMX Companies, the owner of Race Inc., Botima, and Cook Brothers Racing. We brought these two companies together to bring you the best quality product you can get for a BMX bike. We're all about the rider, so please check out our Level Up and Rider First programs. See you at the track. ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology, home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. 4416 Designs commercial, take one. There you go. <laughs> All right, 4416 Designs. We make shirts, but we don't sell them. Uh, we're just giving back to the sport. If you're out at Ukaipa BMX and you need a shirt, Hit me up. I'll hook you up with one. Yeah, I love that. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K O O L S T O P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Amy Grips, still made here in the USA. Used by world champions like me, Tommy Brackens. If you want to know more about the best grips on earth, Go to amy.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That is super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones, so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise, and you can take phone calls and even hear turn-by-turn -turn GPS directions. Hey, support the podcasts that support us, our friends, uh, the fine folks over there at All Things BMX, which is our favorite Wednesday night live podcast, as you know. Uh, our buddies over there at Beer Budget BMX, uh, Big Bike BMX, and BMX Weekly. Check them out. Check them out. Our friends. 
What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac from Big Bike BMX, and I've got a podcast with my best friend, 80s BMX, Craig. Yep, and guess what, you guys? If you have enjoyed your time here on the Dirty Knobs podcast, we'd love for you guys to come over and hang out with us at Big Bike BMX, where we've got all your old school legends and BMX from the past and today at Big Bike BMX. Isaac, Come check us out. We'd love the opportunity to win you over. And if not, hey, it's just another place to talk about BMX with your grimy friends. It's fun. Keep it dirty. We just bought a truck tonight. You did? You did? Oh, yeah. He got a uh, Super Caliber 99 XTR. Whew. Wow, is that anything like a Bazooki 5000 model C? I have no, <laughs> I have no idea what that means. It's, a, <laughs> it's, their, it's their highest level cross country bike. Is that a Malaguchi? Is that like the Malaguchi? <laughs> yeah. It's 20, it, it weighs 21 and a half pounds. Wow. Dude, it's ridiculous. Hey, you know what's ridiculous? Uh, Perry Kramer got knocked out by Kathy Hanna. Yeah, that's and broke a story. television that's a story actually uh most of my money comes from this podcast <laughs> mine too <laughs> i'm rolling in it right now <laughs> yeah all your high paying sponsors like me all of our high paying sponsors <laughs> hey when you get past 650 subscribers we can charge more right all right, we're up to seven seven hundred. <laughs> what? Hey, and Toby, so you know when we hit a thousand, JV said he was going to get a tattoo of our logo. That's right. I did not. Just so <laughs> you know. <laughs> Where though? Where? <laughs> well, we, we've been we've been debating. We've been helping him decide where to get it. <laughs> put it on his chest. So he does his porn flex. We can. E- EC said yeah. put it under his eye, right here. In the shape <laughs> of a tear, like a tear, a big tear. <laughs> I think it. I think it should be right in your lower back. I think you need a tramp stamp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it needs to be on the side of his dick. And so when it gets hard, it says "Dirty Knob Podcast," brought to you by Hollywood Mike Miranda Davies <laughs> and all of our need, fine sponsors, including Racing. I think you need two. I think you need two tattoos. You need the dirty knobs, and then just below it, an arrow pointing to your ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, dirty knobs. See other side. So. oh man <laughs> this, this is how we make our money toby right here i bet, I bet. are we going to expense james's tattoo <laughs> we're going to do it hey my question is are we going to do it live are we going to record it <laughs> i already talked to my friend mike dewey he's uh he used he was a jones track local he owns uh inland empire tattoo okay so like a chain of shops here in the in the empire and he's all he's he's all for it jv he's, he's got ready. you he's clean it's, it's a good clean job it's gonna be fantastic <laughs> i'm gonna tell you man it hurts <laughs> but dude i never said i was getting a tattoo I you know. did i'll did find not. it fine i'll it. find it all right uh, yeah so if i find it yeah okay if i find it you're in right well you know. said it right find it find it okay if when i find it and it's and you, it's you saying it you're in then right when we hit a thousand no me <laughs> See, it's either yes or no okay and if it says if, if you're if you hear it you're in because i'm a jeff botima chinese kung fu movie the dub over that thing right there <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that clip and I'm going to make it. I'm going to post it on Facebook. Okay. Now, Toby. Yes. Got, got a question for you. Hey, Matt. Right, well, here's, here's one for you, dirty knob. <laughs> you, you did it too. That's the problem. Every time we're on the road, we stay with the moms, right? And we go to some mom's house and mom brings us in and, you know, we've got the little kid there and all that mean Botimas with them in some house. We also eat dinner and everybody showers and we're all going to bed. I'm like, where's Jeff? He's not, you know, he's not this bad. <laughs> Always with the mom. The guy no. <laughs> Battling Botima. Yeah, it's like, dude. And so I, the funny thing's like, this guy must be absolutely amazing to bet because everywhere we go, 
He's yeah. not the best looking guy, in my opinion. So it's like, come on, man. You know, you give everywhere we go, you get the check. Dude, head, it should change his name to Headboard. <laughs> headboard Motima. <laughs> you get up in the morning, and also I look coming, coming out of a room, out of the shower, and he has <laughs> house coat on. <laughs> You know, and I don't know if you know, but both my wrists, Eric, are completely have no cartilage in either one of them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm bone to bone. I can't oh. ride anymore. It hurts like fuck when I ride. I still test the drainers, right? But when I ride, it's like clack, 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 clack. When I have sex, clack, clack, you know, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. so, and, and, and I thought it was from the years of mountain biking on a rigid bike. That's what I thought it was. You know, from downhill on a rigid bike. But yeah. they said it was from falling on my BMX bike and squishing the cartilage out. Just smash oh, just catching myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I fall I, every day, right? Yeah. You, you know, catch yourself. Yeah. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was from bending over at the bunk and holding onto the bunk like this. <laughs> well, I'm the same way though, man. Both of my wrists are like in. I would say in the last five years, have really started to like just ache. That's yeah. from a different thing, though. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> That's my different thing. Yeah, <laughs> how old? How old are you? Are you fi- early fifties, right? I'm fifty two. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 61. Yeah. Hey, Toby, ho- just, hold your hand up like this. Can I see your wrist? Can, does it hurt to bend that's all up and bends. down this way? That's all it moves. Up, make a fist like this. Yeah. This way, up. That's, wow, that's not, not, that's not a lot of long range of motion. How's no, yours? I, I, don't you have see? Much. I got bone spurs on both hands. See that? That bone spur. I feel pretty good now. Yeah. What about? I'm, I'm jacked up, man. Side <laughs> to side? <laughs> So like I'm waiting, waiting for oh, it. Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> Lots of range of motion. Lots of range of motion right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were all waiting oh, yeah. for it. We were all waiting yeah. for it. <laughs> hey. Anyway, I, I... Hey, Perry's lucky he didn't get knocked out like he did when he fought Kathy Hanna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, that's such a great story with the boxing gloves. Yeah. That is a great story. Yeah. But I, does that really happen that he got knocked up by Kathy? Or are you just saying that? Is that true? Oh, no, it really happened, didn't it, EC? Yeah, that's what happened. That was a story. Yep. Who told JV saw it. it. JV was back east and it happened. JV oh, saw it. it. Oh, JV. <laughs> in Dal <laughs> Judy's house. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because he's in New Jersey. JV saw it. Yeah, Mal- Jamie saw it. Do you know who Malaguti is? Do you know that name? He wrote for S. Yeah, I had a bowl of it. It was spicy. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Mal- spicy in there. Name, right? I heard when you get that, you can go to the doctor. They have medicine for it. Yeah, the Malagutis. <laughs> Dude, I had a rash on my Malagutis a while back. <laughs> I remember his first name. Uh, anyway. Steve. He's rolling. <laughs> Steve, his real name isn't Steve. His real name is Nunzunzio. Malaguti. Steve, that was it. Steve. It was Steve. Yeah, it was Steve. I, I remember him. Yeah, Steve Malaguti. He rode for SE, skinny kid, wasn't very good. Yeah. For some reason, we stayed at his house and broke the CD. <laughs> yep. And then Jeff slept with his mom, and then Kathy Hanna yes. knocked him out. Jeff slept with everyone's mom. So. <laughs> oh, this is always the best part right here. <laughs> but we can't. <laughs> the part we can't yeah. play. It's still recording. Right. I can oh, see absolutely. It. Yeah, absolutely. It's still recording. Uh, we don't play it, but Just I say, it. by the way, I save them all. Get me divorced. That's all I care about. No, no, I won't do I it. I like man. this one. It's my seventh, but I like this one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, bud, thanks for everything. I really appreciate it, guys. Love you all. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right, so thanks, thanks Toby. All right, bye, guys. See you. See ya.